In this video, I'm going to talk about keyword searching. When setting up your search strategy, you may decide that you would like to use keyword searching. Keyword searching is something that you're very used to because it's exactly what you do anytime you do a Google search. All it means to you is when you're doing keyword searching is you're using the terms that you're familiar with. Keyword searching is, is something that can be problematic and I'm going to demonstrate that through an example. Anytime you're searching for something, you're trying to describe an item or you're trying to explain it to somebody. You may do that sometimes like in an example like this. You see a red Coke can and if you let one person describe it, they may try to explain it by using these words to describe it. Whereas a second person may use an alternate set of terms. One of the things that you'll notice about each set of descriptors is that when it comes to this, there are some similarities. As you can see, they both use soda can. One uses red can, while the other one uses red aluminum can. In each case, they're not wrong in how they're describing this uh, item, but the issue is, is that if, say, person one is um, searching a database or is creating a database and they describe this as a red can while this person to my right here the second person insists on trying to search for this can and we'll think of this can as an article as a soda can they'll never find it keyword searching is very problematic because when it comes to doing keyword searching what you're doing is what is called natural language searching and any time you're doing that, your, your language or your vocabulary is largely based upon perspective and it's also based upon your experience. You know, how you experience things, how you've been exposed to things, where you grew up, all go into the language you use or the vocabulary you use when trying to find things. Now, when you search with keywords, keep in mind that the ser it searches for words or phrases found in the title, abstract, or other parts of an article. Okay, and it, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. Keyword searching will give you a pretty broad set of articles, as you know, because everyone has done Google searching. Keyword searching does have a place when it comes to searching, especially when it comes to uh, searching for things that may be new like new terminology or if the term you're searching for is relatively rare it's also useful um, when a term has no related subject heading and while that doesn't make exact sense to you right now it will after watching the next video um, another reason that you might want to use keywords is when there are spelling variations as you know, science is, be, is a very in, international endeavor, and not every country, even if they speak English, spells words exactly the same. There's European spellings for color, just like there's an American spelling for color. And so you need to keep those things in mind. And so there is a use for keyword searching. It just depends on what you're doing. Now, if you want to ensure that, as I told you with keyword searching, that you're getting everything, one of the things you can try is what is called truncation. Truncation, what it will do is, as you're uh, typing your term, like say you're interested in training, but you're not really sure that everybody is going to describe what you're looking for as training. Like say you're trying to train for a marathon, and you're saying, I'm training for a marathon. Somebody may have discussed their, uh, their in their article how they trained for it. So as a result, one of the things you can do is as you're typing your word, you can have a stem here and then put a star. What the star will do in the database is force the database to put every suffix, as you see in the example below, um, on the end of your stem, therefore giving you trained, trainer, training, etc. That will really expand your search a great deal. Depending on what you're doing, that could be useful, but also be cautious because it also will give you more articles that you have to sift through in order to determine if they're useful. Something else that might be useful when it comes to keyword searching is when you're searching for a phrase, such as guided imagery. Anytime you're doing a, a search in which what you're searching for is composed of two words, if you don't put what are called quotation marks around them, 
what is going to happen is the database is going to search them, in this case guided imagery, as guided and imagery. Therefore, giving you articles that talk about guided imagery, but it may be that just guided and imagery are in the abstract, but it's really not talking about guided imagery. It may be talking about the imagery of a guided trip to Alaska, which if you know anything about guided imagery is not exactly what we're talking about. So if you want to ensure that the database is searching in a way that you intend, you can put quotation marks around your phrase. And what that will do is it will force the database to search it as a phrase, as guided imagery. In doing so, it will also give you a more focused set of articles that are definitely talking or at least contain the phrase that you're looking for. One other thing to be cautious with when it comes to keywords is that in the English language, some words have more than one meaning. And so when you're searching, one of the other frustrations that people voice is that I'm searching for this, but I'm getting a lot of stuff about this, such as nursing. If you ever do a search on the profession of nursing and just put in nursing, as you know, nursing also is a method by which to breastfeed or to feed a baby. So if you put in just nursing, what will happen is you'll get things about nursing as a profession, but you'll also get items about feeding a baby. And so kind of keep that in mind when it comes to keywords. One of the other things to keep in mind when it comes to keywords as to why you get a lot of stuff and some of it's not always related is that the database searches certain parts of the citation depending on how you're trying to do a search. When it comes to keywords, it searches every place you see in red. This is an example of a CINAHL uh, heading citation or a CINAHL citation. And so what you'll notice here is you get all these red spots. And say you were doing a search on child or a children. If you put in child and was doing a search, this article would actually pop up for you because if you look here in the source field, you'll notice this is the International Journal of Child and Adolescent Health. And so this would show up because child is in fact in the journal citation, but it actually has nothing to do with children if you look at the title of the citation. In order for you to evaluate that or to be able to throw this out, you would actually have to look through this article and that would be three seconds that you would never get back and it would expand or extend the amount of time you had to do searching. If, for example, you were doing it in PubMed, it does the exact same thing it did in the CINAHL citation. It would search all of the places you see in red. And in doing so, could cause you problems because it may give you a lot of articles that are unrelated to what you're wanting to do. And that is what you need to know when it comes to keyword searching. That it has a role, but that you need to keep in mind that it will expand your search and sometimes not in a way that you would intend.